Triple One above the Brar Street Bridge. I'm Susie Patrick. Thanks for that, Susie. 839 now. Dr. Divi Chanda here, a mind-body uh, practitioner. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, before we get to the calls or the emails, I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about anxiety and depression. They seem to be uh, prevalent in the news right now, and you have a few tips on uh, for how some of our viewers could deal with that. Yeah, anxiety and depression is really, really common these days. The first thing that I tell people is anxiety is generally related to the mind going into the future. We're racing ahead thinking, what if, what if, and we're worried about what's coming. Depression Depression is usually the mind going to the past mm. and it's lamenting about what happened yesterday. So what the difference is, is we're not at all paying attention to right now. And that takes training. <laughs> As humans and adults, our minds kind of race ahead mm -hmm. and race behind. So we have to train our mind to be in the moment now. So some things I teach people is how to be in the moment now. The easiest way is by simply starting a meditation practice. All I'm talking is three minutes, four minutes a day, not very long. You can go to YouTube, get some, get some quick downloads there, go to my website. There's five minute meditations there. What that does is it trains your mind into being in the moment now and as you do that you develop a tool called mindfulness mindfulness is about being aware of where our thoughts are so oh my thought is yesterday oh my thought is tomorrow mm -hmm. and so as you become aware you go oh, okay and then you use your breath to come back to now interesting yeah, I once had a very wise person tell me not to borrow trouble by worrying about things that haven't happened yet so that's a great expression yeah, good yeah. all right your second uh, tip for anxiety and depression so what I tell people is like schedule a life like most people don't realize but we some people don't have schedules at all but we wake up in the morning we brush our teeth we make up in the morning we wash our hair that's to clean that area but we don't think about our mind we need to clean our mind so one of the biggest things I tell people is walk into nature get outside being in BC we're so fortunate go to the mountains go to the ocean and just sit there close your eyes be present and feel and you'll notice that nature has this ability to bring us into the now mm -hmm. and just for a few moments that's all you need to do so schedule 10 minutes a day go outside mm -hmm. yeah uh, your third tip one we hear very often exercise yeah it's a big one. Well, it's statistically, scientifically proven. Get outside, exercise, be inside, exercise, but it increases endorphins. Just 15 to 20 minutes a day. Increases serotonin. It combats depression and anxiety. Makes a big difference. It does. Uh, diet, nutrition affect you as well? Hugely. What most people don't realize is that their diet actually affects their mood. So if you actually shop in the grocery store or around the grocery store rather than down the aisles, you're more prone to pick up things like fruits and vegetables and whole foods. And then when you walk down the aisles, you're going to pick up more chemically laden foods. For sensitive people, the chemicals actually stimulate depression. So try for four or five weeks just to walk around the grocery store and buy foods from there. Living in Vancouver, we tend to get a lot of, lot of cloud cover like this week coming up. So vitamin D is something a lot of us are missing. So two to 4,000 units of vitamin D does a great impact to lift the mood. All right. Yeah. And your final tip? My final tip. I was just related to the last story you did on the animals. Mm -hmm. Love. Love is a huge thing. Like when we fall in love or we have our kids or our grandkids, we get this emotion of love that overtakes us. When we're in love, we're in the moment now. We're not into yesterday. We're not into tomorrow. And what that does is it just causes us to be here. So animals, you were talking about the SPCA earlier in the segments, and that's a great thing. Get a cat or a dog, and that forces you to be in the now, just feeling the love for the animal. Even your last segment on the tigers and the bears, I mean, God, that was so sweet. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have difficulties, like you were talking earlier, with allergies or asthma, so they can't get a cat or a dog. And a lot of the sem seminars I teach, I teach people how to get the emotion of love or joy into their body and into their lives without an external like signal, but feeling love is a great technique. Yeah. All right, we have uh, an email from Marion in Salmon Arm who sent this in. She said she has something called a Baker cyst behind her knee, um, and she would like some solutions for pain management and maybe a suggestion of why it can't be removed. Sure. Thanks, Marion. So Baker cysts are typically little fluid accumulations that occur behind the knee, and for some people they really impact pain and it, it affects their ability to exercise. The traditional things are to get out and get some physiotherapy therapy done, get some walking, and then sometimes, depending on where the Baker cyst is located and exactly how it's loculated in the body, they can sometimes extract the fluid, Marion, and sometimes they can't. And it sounds like in your case they can't. So if you've, ex I assume that you've already done a lot of physio, and if that's not working, this is a really big tip I want to give you. When people come to me, they've traditionally exhausted everything else, and they've come to me, they're like, help me, Divi. So mind-body medicine, if you think about it, the mind affects the body, and the body affects the mind. And what you're experiencing, Marion, is really common. You've got a lot of pain in your knee and it's making you possibly more depressed or more anxious and more frustrated. So it's affecting the mind. So we can flip it. And this is a bit counterintuitive what I'm going to say. It's going to be what we were just talking about.
talking about. Getting happy, feeling joyful. Think of all the things in your life that are working. And as you do that really regularly, I've taught literally hundreds of people, when they start to do that, they actually can release their chronic pain. And it really is counterintuitive because we think, oh, I've got to fix this problem. But if you start to live life from a place of happiness and ease, your body responds. All right. Yeah. Good advice. Marion from Surrey is on the line. Good morning, Marion. Marion is no longer on the line. Okay. All right. Let's go to our next email then. This one's from Ellen who says she has a chronic illness that keeps her housebound more often than she would like. Uh, while she feels she's coping well, she thinks her husband is struggling. Anything you can suggest to improve his well-being? Thanks, Ellen. That's a great question. So when people are housebound or being, being inside more, there's actually a lot you can do. You can rent movies that are comedies. You can rent love stories you can do all that kind of stuff playing cards I've worked with a lot of Olympians and what they're really really good at doing is visualization so they spend a lot of time in visualization so if you're housebound Ellen I really encourage you and your husband to maybe get onto YouTube and get some visualization meditations going on get some music all of those things can help to calm down your endorphins in your body and help you to feel better hmm. yeah okay. yeah pretty Advice. simple things all right we do have Marion from Surrey on the okay. line Marion are you there yeah Hi, you have a question for Dr. Divi? Yes, fuchsia dystrophy, F-U-S-H-I, it's an eye here. problem. Sorry, can you speak up a little bit, Marion? Fuchsia dystrophy, it's fuchsia dystrophy. F -U -C -H -S dystrophy, it's something to do with the eyes. Mm -hmm. I just wondered what it was. Fascia dystrophy? Yes. So my understanding of that condition is we were, we were talking earlier in the last segment I was on that the body actually has a layer called fascia. And this fascia layer is a connective tissue that envelopes the whole body. And that fascia layer actually holds on to emotional memory. And it, when triggered, it can cause pain. So what, what you're experiencing likely is that the fascia is holding on to emotional memory. And if you can visualize it, how I describe it to clients is it's like your whole body is one saran wrap piece. And that saran wrap piece is nicked a bit and they've got emotional knots there. So you've got a chronic pain syndrome because the fascia is nicked a bit. So any of the techniques I talked about today or in the workshops I teach are all about releasing those emotional knots. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck with that, Marion, and thanks for calling us. Thanks for being here, Dr. Divi. If you have any more questions for Dr. Divi, give her a website. Check out her website, drdivi.com. And if you have questions for any of our Ask an Experts, uh, send them to Weekend News at GlobalTV.com. Be sure to include Ask an Expert in the subject line. Time for us to check in with Christy Gordon and learn more about the small town of Wells today. Thanks so much, Lynn. Uh, yeah. So the town.